change is a constant. We're lucky to have the same team this week that we did last week. We accept it and embrace it, but there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason that we're constantly faced with ambiguity and change, and we actually relish it. Because as we all know, when you have new people enter the team, they bring new ideas, or they challenge old ideas. And that, of course, leads to innovation. Same concept applies to Seattle. We have less diversity, we'll have fewer ideas, fewer ideas will lead to less innovation, less innovation eventually will mean economic growth will slow down. So I believe that we not only can have both economic growth and diversity in our city, but we must have both. And that is what we are here for tonight. Yeah. We are here at this launch event to help Bell Other Housing build 750 homes in three years. Amen. That is five times faster than the previous 35 years. So this thing is accelerating. <laughs> and it's accelerating for a reason, right? It's because we need much more affordable housing in Seattle. The great news is that if you're part of Amazon, uh, Amazon is going to match our giving to organizations such as Bell Weather House. One of the things I'm very excited about is you'll hear a little bit more from uh, Susan Boyd, the Bell Weather CEO, a bit later on, is we're going to describe a brand new way to participate in building these 750 homes. It's a first of its kind in the nation and it's really exciting. Susan will talk more about that. But just keep in mind as you're watching it, that A, this is the first of its kind of this nation. It's for an unbelievably good cause because we want to diverse Seattle. And if you're Amazonian, the time to give big is to give now because the Amazon match lasts until September. So with that, Let's get started. I'd like to introduce Mayor Jane Murphy, who is the first uh, woman mayor in Seattle in nearly 100 years. And since she had started her term, she has been working and fighting to make Seattle an affordable and a livable city. We're delighted to have her here tonight. Please welcome Mayor Durbin. Thank you for the kind words. I see a lot of tech for housing buttons. How many of you are tech for housing? There we go. Um, I want to thank Amazon for having us here. I want to thank Bill Weather for all they're doing. We are at, I also want to call out a person I don't think met, our newest council member, Pacheco, who's right here. Um, <laughs> He's very humble. Um, we'll fix that. Um, look, Seattle, we, we talked about, I, am, I, I learned a fact that I didn't know recently is I am the first mayor in the history of Seattle elected to be mayor who's actually born in Seattle. Oh, pretty amazing, right? Um, and I have seen in my lifetime a change in this city that I didn't think I would see. I believe Seattle still is the best town anywhere. Um, right. We are the best town anywhere. But we have had such enormous growth and it has brought existential changes to our city. Um, we need more density and more housing and we need it as quickly mm -hmm. as we can get it. Mm -hmm. And you can clap for that because you're going to be part of that. <laughs> is open to people who can't afford to live in Seattle right now. Right. This city has become too expensive, and you have seen particularly our communities of color have been pushed out, others have been locked out, our nurses, our, our social workers are $15 an hour, they can't afford to live here. And they have longer commutes, it takes them longer to get to their job, it's more expensive. And if we want to be that city in the future that we want to be, the Seattle that we have to grow into, we gotta change that. 
we got to make sure that we are building as much opportunity for everyone in Seattle as we can, and that we're coming together on things like this and every day to say, how do we get more affordable housing in every part of the city? So if we squint our eyes a little bit, we can look into the future, we can imagine what the city can be like if we do it right. You know, we can have those really vibrant neighborhoods where people live of every background, tons of diversity, where you can walk and bike and roll to wherever you want to go and never have to get into a car. We need that city of the future. But it's only going to happen if we take this moment in time and really roll up our sleeves and say, we have got to do it. We've taken some really great steps in the last three weeks getting MHA passed so that we can get more up zones and more money for affordable housing was really critical and moving forward to the city we want to be. All right. Today I was able to go and sign into law at Fort Lawton, the law that will make finally affordable housing at Fort Lawton for families and neighbors. Ownership opportunities for people who are locked out of the market right now. Um, and we have to do better because I, being from Seattle, you know, I remember that in 1970, a guy named Bernie White Bear, who believed in the rights of Native Americans, took a, a group of people and stormed Fort Lawton to claim it back for Native people. Mm -hmm. And he was friends with three other big activists at the time. Roberto Maestas, who took a school on Beacon Hill, and it's now El Centro de la Raza, and provides community and housing for people. You know, we know what works. We had Bernie and Bob Santos from Chinatown International District making sure we had places for community there. And Larry Gossett, who took the Central Area Motivational Program to make sure that African Americans could stay and live in the Central District. We have to continue that legacy. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so proud to be here today. And to be able to introduce our next speaker, Susan, because Bellwether Housing has a model that is really about empowerment of people. To make sure that people who live in Seattle, that we're looking at projects that are going to be in all parts of the city, that make sure that they have, give those people a rooted place to live. Um, our Office of Housing, and I see people from my Office of Housing, raise your hand because you guys have been working like crazy. Yeah. Through their hard work in two years, we've announced almost a hundred almost a hundred million dollars in housing through all these projects, which is remarkable and it's not enough. So that's why we're so delighted that Bellwether is doing this program and want to urge all of you who can give and get matched. I'm not going to seek any particular group, but let's talk about Bellwether. <laughs> um, you know, we talk about 750 affordable homes. Those homes will support nearly 2,400 people. Think about opening the doors to Seattle right here in South Bay Union and other places to people who could not live there. Um, Arbor Court, Anchor Flats, she's going to announce some really cool things. She's been an amazing leader. Um, I am really lucky to be there because I stand on the shoulders of the work that everybody else is doing and able to see all the great things that we're doing in this city. Um, and we've got to keep it up. Whatever you do when you leave here, think about what are three more ways you can do things to help more affordable housing better transit in that city of the future. That's what we've got to do. And for that, I'm going to give a really enormous, wonderful leader. Susan, you've got the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Durkin. Um, we are really proud to uh, be partnering with you and others in the city to bring together, find new ways to bring together the public sector private sector and the nonprofit sector um, to have a bigger impact on our affordable housing challenges we will see. Um, so thank you all for being here. Thank you, Peter. Wow, thank you, Amazon, um, for inviting us into this iconic uh, venue to um, announce, uh, to launch what we think is an amazing um, 
tool for mobilizing an entire community around affordable housing. Susan, don't you just want to say Alexa or housing? I wish it were but it was really good. We were a little worried about um, whether you all would be able to see us here, and I can tell. <laughs> Tell that um, those of you who have your phones up, uh, it's a little bit hard to see in the front here. So, we're going to get taller. I brought myself up. <laughs> We live in the Seattle area for many reasons. Some of us were born and raised here, while many of us have moved here for a new job, higher education, or to rebuild our lives in a new country. We come for the casual lifestyle, the progressive culture, and the economic opportunities. 
can say with beautiful views and amazing community. But our region is changing. As our community grows, so does the cost of living here. Rents keep rising, getting out of reach for many of us. It's increasingly difficult to stay rooted in the communities we call home. Many of us are getting priced out of the neighborhoods we love. And as more of us struggle to make ends meet, we're forced further and further away from Seattle in search of affordable rents. This means small businesses are shutting down. We're searching for a new home because the valuable land they sit upon is being redeveloped. This means longer commutes make traffic worse and take even more precious time away from our families. This means some families end up living in their cars. More children join the 4,600 homeless kids already in the Seattle school district. And sometimes, the answer is to simply move out of the region altogether. It doesn't have to be like this. There's a better way. Though other housing is writing a different story, in the next three years, we're building 750 new affordable homes in Seattle and Tokyo. And we need your help. Bellwether is the first nonprofit ever to use crowdfunding efforts to build affordable housing. By investing in our campaign, you're pioneering an innovative new way to fund affordable housing. Plus, every dollar you invest is bolstered by $29 of public funding. Bellwether's affordable homes include floor plans up to four bedrooms, serving families of all sizes and shapes who are struggling. Every building is near light rail and public transit, reducing traffic congestion and reliance on cars. With shorter commutes and access to public transit, Bellwether residents can spend more time on the things that matter. When we come together as a community, we can create a vibrant, diverse region that is accessible to everybody, regardless of it. You can be part of the solution. Together, we're building opportunities. Um, going geographically from south to north, um, and starting with the confluence. The confluence is special because it is our first building outside of the city of Seattle. Um, it's been an incredible experience working with this very diverse community that is facing dual pressures of um, a lot of um, uh, lower income people there and also rapidly rising rents. Um, I want to give a little shout out to the mayor of the city of Tokyo, who's here, Alan Eckford. Yeah. Uh, the is just uh, a stone's throw from the light rail station in Tokyo, with over 100 homes um, with real heavy emphasis on families there. Uh, Rose Street Phase 2, this building will be immediate, will be adjacent to another building that we have in the Rainier Beach neighborhood. 180 units, uh, two, three, four bedroom units here. Um, very exciting. Near in neighborhood, across from a community center, um, just blocks from a library, a grocery store, um, and also on a rapid transit line. Um, Madison Boylston, sometimes we call it Mad Boy. Um, <laughs> 17 stories of affordable housing. This will be Seattle's first nonprofit developed high rise. I'm also very proud to be partnering with Clement Housing, who will own and operate five floors for chronically homeless seniors um, uh, at the bottom of the building, and we will have 12 floors of um, bellwether housing uh, um, above that. Um, so total over about 360 units uh, in the heart of Earth's Hill. Um, important partner on, on um, uh, Mad Boy um, is Sam Transit. This is on land that's dedicated to this building, to this project by Sound Transit, who's becoming an increasingly important partner in the building housing. Um, Cedar Crossing, this another Sound Transit site immediately adjacent 
to what will be the Roosevelt Light Rail Station opening in North Seattle in 2021. 245 units of housing, 40% of which will be two and three bedroom units for families, ground floor child care. Um, actually, uh, Mayor Durkin and, uh, uh, talked about El Centro de la Raza. They will be operating child care on the ground floor. Um, so, uh, very, again, a very exciting project for us. Okay, so today we launched our building opportunity campaign to raise $9 million. That $9 million uh, is the gap between what we can raise in our 200, uh, I'm sorry, what we raise in our traditional financing um, uh, structures, what we can raise from our government partners, um, and the cost to build this housing. Half of that $9 million we will raise in the form of contributions uh, and grants from foundations and corporations and individuals. Uh, and the other half, the half that we're really focused on today, in the form of investments. And this is our this innovation that we've been talking about. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about what I mean by investments. In 2015, Bellwether introduced a tool for funding affordable housing that no other organization had done before. Um, the local individuals and families who cared deeply about their communities and about affordable housing loaned us money at very modest interest rates um, that we could use to acquire and build housing. This is money that we would repay in 5, 10, 15 years. In 2015, we had our first fund of $2 million, and in 2016, we had another fund of $2 million. So this year, this year from this moment right now um, to sometime in the fall, we're hoping to raise $4.5 million that will help us build these settlement homes in the form of the investment. This year's funds will look much like the funds we've done in the past in two important differences. One, scale. Four and a half million dollars is over twice as big as the funds we've done in the past, and it's going to leverage many more units than we've been able to build in the past. The other difference is breadth. In the last two investments, we were restricted by some federal security rules that I won't go into, but that only that allow, only permitted us to raise money from fairly affluent individuals. Um, this round, we are using uh, a new federal crowdfunding rules to open this fund to anyone who wants to invest, uh, allowing really the entire community to come together and participate very directly and powerfully in the creation of a more affordable, equitable, and just Seattle. We are the, we were the first nonprofit to use this investment tool, and we are the first nonprofit organization to use this crowdfunding mechanism for housing or for any other purpose. And I can think of no better place than the city of Seattle, no better venue than the Spears, and no better cause for which to implement this uh, innovation um, and for uh, affordable housing in this region. And uh, thank you again to Amazon for putting their weight behind this campaign. We are honored that Amazon has uh, selected Bellwether for its matching campaign and will match employee participation dollar for dollar between now and September, as Peter pointed out. So um, this fund uh, is it's a, a online portal, um, and we uh, just opened the portal yesterday. Um, and kind of a drum roll. We actually, <laughs> we already have $2.4 million. <laughs> I want 
to uh, make a special thank you to this to what well, we've had a number of investors who have come back um, on back the fund. One of them is the Scatterbird Foundation, and they uh, agreed to come in early on this fund and strong on this fund. We have an investment of a million dollars. So you might be thinking, well, if you're filling up that fast tea, you know, um, is there going to be room for me? Well, so A, hurry up. Uh, <laughs> and that B, uh, board members, plug your ears. If I, if we can raise more than four and a half million dollars, I'm going to do it. Uh, because this 750 homes that we have is just the beginning. We actually have a pipeline of 750 more homes. Um, yeah. I'm going to my um, the terms we are offering are uh, on uh, uh, the terms of the offering are on the flyers are on the table, and you can find them here. Um, more information about the projects, about Bellwether, our financials, our previous offerings are all on the site. Um, I'm going to introduce a couple more people, but before I do that, I want to thank Tech for Housing. Um, Woo! Thank you. <laughs> organizing the tech community around housing issues, and it was Tech for Housing and their executive director, Ethan Phelps Goodman, who came to us and said, you need to do a crowdfunding here. We care about this issue. We're not accredited investors, and we want to participate. And I know they helped get the word out to many of you. Um, we have a group of folks who have been advising us on who to talk to about this crowdfunding business and how to reach out to all of you. Have been inspiring us and uh, giving us general moral support. They are listed here on the screen. So thank you to our. Um, <laughs> Board of Directors, you guys have been amazing ambassadors for the mission, for the organization, and for this campaign. Thank you so much. Um, to my team at Bellwether, I, I always get choked up here. You guys work every day to advance our mission. You work hard to hold that public trust that we um, treasure, um, to balance efficiency with quality to uh, do right by the people who live in our buildings and to really honor the communities that we serve. I'm so proud to be part of your team. Thank you, Mayor Griffin, for being here and reminding us of the city's commitment to, afford to an affordable Seattle. And thank you again to Amazon for hosting us and for stepping in to this affordable housing crisis we're facing. So now I get to introduce two amazing people who have helped us develop this campaign by participating in the crowdfunding advisory group. Uh, Cameron Keegan is a relatively new Seattleite but has thrown his heart and soul into the city. He works for Modus, a fast-growing real estate tech startup. He is an organizer and board member at Tech for Housing. And he sees a future where housing markets are more sustainable and equitable. Alex Hudson, uh, who I am proud to say is a Bellwether board member. She is also the executive director of Transportation Choices Coalition, an advocacy and education organization working to improve transportation options across the state. Alex believes deeply in the power of equitable transit-oriented development transit-oriented communities to change the world. Yeah. Um, so, get up here on your show. All right, so I'm just going to keep the soapbox, actually, because I could be even taller. Um, good evening, everyone. I am so excited tonight for Bellwether Housing and for the future of Seattle. My name is Cameron Keegan. I'm an organizer and board member at Tech for Housing. Tech for Housing is a civic advocacy organization. We are sponsored by the Housing Development Consortium. And we organize the tech community to create a more affordable, sustainable, and equitable Seattle. 
So we focus on advocacy, we focus on volunteering, uh, specific focus on skills and project-based volunteering, along with general education and outreach to the general populace to get people engaged and get them involved uh, in understanding where we lie with this problem and creating a more affordable scout for all people. So as Susan already mentioned, about a year and a half ago, Tech for Housing approached Bellwether Housing with the idea of democratizing an impact investment campaign so that everyday investors could help build and fund affordable housing in our own backyard. And tonight we are so thrilled to see that literally play out in front of our eyes. Thank you all so much. I also want to extend a really, really big thank you and shout out to Amy Besunder and Claire Magula, not only for putting together this event, but for putting together the entire campaign. Without them, this would not be possible. Amy and Claire. Thank you both so much. Now, I know I don't need to remind all of you tonight how dire it is that we address this city's affordability crisis. We all see it in different forms every single day. We see our neighbors move out of the city further and further away to find an affordable place that they can call home. We see that with every increase in rent, people who used to be living in homes now living without them. But living in this beautiful city should not just be a privilege for the very law. To be inclusive of everyone who makes the city thrive, regardless of your law. Now, unfortunately, we also see a lot of people who really want to help. We come across people every day, tech community or not, who are asking the same questions How can I help? What actions can I take to make my city more affordable, more equitable for all people? And in many ways, this campaign is the resounding answer to that very question. So I want to make sure that the novelty and power of this campaign is not lost on you all tonight. This is the nation's very first ever impact investing fund using crowdfunding instruments to fund and build affordable housing, meaning that you don't have to be a wealthy and credit investor to be a part of this campaign. You can put your money in stocks, you can put your money in real estate, and you can put your money in startups. And now, for the first time ever, you can put your money in building affordable housing in our very own backyard. <laughs> so now, my simple call to action for you all tonight is just invest. Invest in building opportunity. Invest in you're going to return, earn a return on that investment. Invest in the Seattle with a more affordable and equitable future. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Hudson, and I'm the Executive Director of Transportation Choices Coalition. We're a statewide advocacy organization that, as Susan mentioned, really believes that when we put together the power of public transportation and land use and planning and housing, that we can build communities where everyone can participate, everyone can thrive, and I'm also extremely proud to be a Bellwether Housing board member. Why I'm a Bellwether Housing Board member. So, previous to my role at Transportation Choices Coalition, I was the executive director of the First Hill Improvement Association, which is a neighborhood organization that serves Seattle's first hill neighborhood, the only neighborhood in Seattle where there is zero single family housing, completely multi family housing. We like to say that we're a front yard only neighborhood. And, um, First Hill has 22% of the, all of the units there are at, um, are regulated affordable housing units. But we're facing a 72% increase in population. And what we knew what that meant, what is going to be harder and harder and harder for us to build the affordable housing that our neighborhood needed in order to continue to be this opportunity and transit rich place for people to put down roots and call it a home. And I happen to live across the street from a Bellwether housing building. I live across the street from Cascade Court. And what that means is that every day when I was doing my work and just like existing, I got to hear things that you don't get to hear often in, in our neighborhoods. Children laughing. 
old people swoop around in their walkers and, and make these amazing relationships with people who are putting down roots, who are never going to leave our neighborhoods, who become this textural richness that makes our community like a real place. Bellwether approached our neighborhood because they wanted to do the map Life project. Words, people, what is this idea? They want to build a high rise residential building for affordable housing. Like, that's never been done. And what I quickly learned through the infectious energy of Susan and her team is that this is a group of people who don't believe in that's never been done before. This is a group of people who believe that we have the opportunity and that they have the courage to take this, this idea and turn it into action, but that they needed to do that together. So our neighborhood came together and said, our values in First Hill and our values of everybody that's here today and our values of Seattle are that we welcome people, that we build space, that neighbor and neighborhood is not a dirty word anymore and that we together can be that transformative change. And what we're seeing is an innovative funding model, a project that is blowing the roof off of what's possible to build for affordable housing. And I was like, I want to be a part of this. And so I joined the board of Bellwether Housing, and when I transferred over to my current role in transportation, it made it even more important to me, because I know that transit and housing next to it unlocks the world for people. When you have got the ability to live somewhere and the ability to get anywhere, there is nothing you can't do. There is nothing that we can't do. And so I am so proud to be a part of this, so proud to be a part of all of it, and so honored to be able to stand in front of you all and ask you to be a part of it too. To invest in these homes, these people, these communities, so that we all get the joy of living somewhere where there's like kids and old people and everybody's together at the bus stop and we're having a good time and we're enriched by the ability to be around people who are different than us. So I invite you to invest in this. I invite you to tell everyone you know about it and to encourage others to be a part of building the future. Mayor Durkin, I love the phrase you always talk about. Seattle is the city that invents the future. And today you are having the opportunity to invest in that future. And I hope you'll join us. I was so excited to get on the soapbox. <laughs> Me again, Peter from Amazon. A few things to close us out here. <laughs> Number one is that my wife and I were an investor in the last Bellwater Housing Impact Fund. We invested because uh, we got to drive. We get to drive by a tangible brick and mortar, brick and mortar uh, affordable housing unit on Dexter Avenue almost every day. So it gave us great return. Uh, for what our money was going to do, because it's right in the middle of the neighborhood where we live and where um, we also work. Second thing, it's a great deal, and I'm speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking specifically to Amazonians. This is not a donation. This is a loan that pays 2% a year that you get back. What's not to like? I don't know. I'd encourage all the Amazonians, but everybody here, to think hard about this opportunity in front of us. If you've got $1,000, or if you've got $10,000, and I do have inside information, I'm intimately <laughs> familiar with the Amazon compensation model, so I think all of the Amazonians out here can probably afford $1,000. Many of us can afford $10,000, and that's what we should be thinking of. If you don't have use for that money for the next five or 10 years, put it in this. Earn 2% if you have the opportunity to get it back or you can continue to invest it in future funds. And 
now is the time, because the Amazon match ends in September. So, so if you invest $1,000, it automatically becomes $2,000. If you invest $10,000, it automatically becomes $20,000. So do it now, I would say. The final thing I'll leave you with is, go back to work tomorrow, hopefully not tonight, <laughs> and tell everybody. Put it on your social media, tell the person who sits next to you, wherever you're sitting at, uh, in the lunchroom, at your next all hands, because I really do think it's a unique opportunity, and I think a lot of us, not just those of us here, will be really interested in helping out. With that, I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and have a great night.